Welcome. So blessed to be with you guys today. I'm in the studio with my dear friend, Dr. Daryl Rogers. And man, if you are not here for our last episode of Kingdom Concepts, I encourage you, you're going to want to go back and you're going to want to listen to that. Amen. Uh, it will definitely add to your life and bless your life. Uh, if you haven't already, we would love, amen, for you to hit that like button and subscribe. So that way, every Monday when we release a new episode, amen, you're there to receive it because our mission in this life is to help you to be a success in every area. We want to add to what God has already begun in you, amen. And so these teachings and these topics, this subject matter that we bring before you, it's stuff that you face in everyday life, amen. And we want to help you ensure victory, amen. So we would love, amen, for you to receive this every week. Grab your notebook, uh, grab a Bible, um, and man, prepare yourself, amen, for what we're going to share because, man, this stuff's getting hot, amen. We've been talking about the things that are required to have that firm foundation in which to build a life on, build a family upon. And the last episode uh, when we concluded, we were talking about how important it is to have that rhema word, that revelation word in your life and especially if you're going to become a solid believer because uh, we know that the Word is, is what God works with when it comes to us doing anything. Everything begins and ends with the Word. And I think that's why Satan fights so hard to try to keep us from being those Word believers because he knows when you have the Word and it's where it needs to be in your life as far as you have that revelation of it, you're going to start gaining ground for God. You're going to start moving closer and closer to that purpose that he has for your life. But I think so often so many young believers, um, they succumb to uh, just counting on what somebody else has, has been feeding on and them just giving it to them to satisfy and su to sustain them. Um, I remember being a young Christian and I would get my Bible uh, you know, I was at church every time the doors were open, I'd be there to, to hear the word. And, but I remember times I'd go home, I'd open up my Bible, and that was usually when I got a lot of my best naps, was when I pulled out my Bible and to study. And then you wake up, you know, with a little drool on your face, and you're like, oh, man, that was so peaceful. Thank you, Jesus. But I didn't learn nothing. It wasn't until I, I started coming to the place to where I was seeking God to reveal to me who he is through the word, that I started feeling strength and I started having more confidence in his ability to speak to me. How important is it, Doc, for, for us to, uh, to put this word inside of us when it comes to making decisions and living this life? Well, and that's a loaded question. Well, the thing of it is, is, man, is that you can go to church for the next 50 years. Mm -hmm and never have anything that sets you free because even though it's being presented, do you believe it? Mm. You can believe in the person preaching the message, but do you believe in the principle that's being preached? Because it's kind of like this. When we, receive, when we are believing God for healing, Think of this. We're waiting on God to heal us, and He's already done it. <laughs> yeah, he so that stripes. doesn't even make sense. So you got to change the way you think. You know, think on these things. Uh, mm. Philippians 4 8 says, mm -hmm. okay? The way that the enemy gets you is because we suffer in our physical bodies. Mm symptoms, attacks like everybody else does, and we want God to heal us, and yet he is just saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. So you got to believe something that he has guaranteed. I think it's so interesting, Josh, that we, we don't struggle over we don't struggle over salvation. It's we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. But the same word for sozo mm. is healing mm. and restoration and mm. blessings and prosperity. Mm -hmm. 
the fullness of everything. But we get into our heads, and we're wanting God to do it, mm -hmm. and God is just saying, I've already given you the power to get wealth. Mm -hmm. Go do it. Go get it. See, because the word for receive in the Greek is to take. Mm -hmm. How do you take what God has already given? Mm -hmm. Well, you got to believe it. We took salvation. Mm -hmm. It was that promised by grace are you saved through faith and not, not of mm -hmm. yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any mm -hmm. man should boast. boast. Yeah. Okay. So we did that, but never taking into consideration that it's talking about everything in our life. Isn't it something how, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, Galatians 3.11, you know, uh, Habakkuk 2.4, I mean, just Old Testament, New Testament, the just shall live by faith. Right. And we know that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Um, we're supposed to live by faith, and it took faith to get saved. Someone gave you a word, said Jesus loves you, and he'll forgive you for everything you've done if you ask him for forgiveness and receive this salvation. And like you said, it's a gift that we receive. And yet, I, I think that that's where a lot of people just, they, they stop there. And unless you're willing to, you know, grow in, in, your, in your understanding of the word, you're going to remain there at that, that initial first step getting born again, and your life's going to continue to look the same. You're going to have Jesus in your heart, and you're going to go to heaven, but your life is not going to look too different than the life you've been living. And I know for me that I had to come to a place early in my walk with God to where I understood that if I'm going to succeed, then I'm going to have to go after this word. I'm going to have to, uh, to learn, amen, what it is that God wants my life to be. And I had to make some choices. I had to make some decisions that I was going to be intentional when it came to my development. So I seized uh, every opportunity to be in church because I knew there are other people that know more than me and I'm going to learn what they know. Um, I would also go and hang out with people that had a lot of history with God. I used to hang out with all the widows in the church, you know, little grandmas, man. I'd go mow their lawns. I'd go wash their dogs. I'd do anything just so I could be there and ask them questions about, you know, how they got born again. You know, when did they get filled with the Holy Ghost? How, how did you create a life of longevity to where you've been saved since you were six and now you're 96. You know, I want to know what did you do? Because if I can do what you did, then I can have that same life. And because I didn't want to go back to where I came from, but I had to come to that place to where I was uh, just uh, overcome with an appetite to be able to hear from God. And I wanted to hear from God from myself. I, I, my attitude was, if my pastor can hear from the Lord, I want to be able to hear from the Lord. And so uh, I remember when revelation started coming. And, uh, and it's a beautiful thing when people start stepping towards uh, the Lord and they allow themselves to be led by God. How important is it to get to that place to where you're not just sitting there wanting someone to stick a spoon of the word in your mouth, but you're willing to go out and seek. You're willing to, to feed yourself. Well, I mean, first of all, that's a decision that you got to make. Mm, okay. Okay. Because if you get hungry for the word, and it's not going to be because you're just hungry. Come on. It's going to be because you start doing the very things that cause you to desire to be filled up with something spiritual. Mm. I'll never forget this, man. When I first you know, got turned on to the Word of God, because I had never heard the Word preached like it was preached in 75. All right. I, you know, because I had been raised in church. Now you're a PK. Yeah, and so... I went to Ron Halverson's church in Riverside Bethel Assembly on Madison. Mm -hmm. I, I saw Catholic priests on the right-hand side with nuns, had their hands raised, they're praying in tongues. The people were dancing in the front of the church. Uh, prophetic words, heavy worship, heavy mm -hmm. praise. 
And the Word, the Word was so alive, man, mm. that you're holding a tape recorder with your left hand out with your microphone on so you could pick up because they didn't have a tape ministry. Yeah. Okay? So if you were going to get that service, you had to bring your own tape recorder. All so right. I had this Sony tape recorder that was about this big, and it was set on my lap, set on this uh, leg, because I had my Bible on the right leg. All right. And then I was holding with the left hand, you know, the microphone. And the thing of it is, is the place was packed. There were people sitting down the aisles. That's a big church, too. Yeah. It's a good church. And so the, the thing of it is, is that even though I started out like that, there came a day when I had heard the word and mimicked the word, but I didn't have the word inside of me. So I'm thinking to myself, I didn't like Kenneth Copeland. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I, li I love him now. <laughs> but I didn't like him in the days because I thought that he just told stories. Mm -hmm. So I thought to me, you know, brilliant thought. And so I go, why does he have so many people following him if all he does is tell stories? Mm. I said, I must be missing something. Oh, come on. So I took tapes, and I had a handheld tape recorder that you could play. Mm -hmm. I started writing down every word he spoke. I found out 90% of that tape was either reference to a scripture, revelation mm -hmm. about a scripture, mm -hmm. or the address was given about the scripture. So I would stop that tape, and I would look up. In those days, I didn't have a computer, mm -hmm. so I couldn't just search on a computer program. You had to dig. So I had to dig <laughs> through the Strong's or the Vines. And, and, you know, and so I would stop, and then I would write out every word. Mm. That was... That was the best thing that I've ever done for me. Mm. I'm guaranteeing you that we have people that come and hear and hear and hear and hear, but they don't understand. Mm. And so the enemy pushes on them to get them to compromise even their position about the truth will make you free. Because they are, they've got all these thoughts about depending upon God to do it. And actually, I'm supposed to be so filled mm -hmm. with the power of God that I just take what God has already given. Mm -hmm. So the Word has to be alive in me. Yes. And, and it has to become a thing that creates more aliveness in me. So when, when you preach, if, if you look at me, I'm listening to every word you speak. <laughs> Amen. I, I am. And, I and the thing are. of it is, I'm are. looking at the me. word of God, and I'm, I'm thinking, hmm, boy, you know that other scripture, that ties right in. Right into this. <laughs> I, I want to go. I know. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Because, <laughs> <me. laughs> you know, it's like when you start off. I remember when I first started, you know, getting into ministry. Man, I'd spend six hours, eight hours at a table like this with my Bible and the concordances and yeah. songs, everything you had mentioned, you know, back when nothing, we didn't have iPhones and, you know, we had books. And I remember just begging God to give me enough revelation to last 15 minutes behind that pulpit, you know, but as you hunger and thirst after righteousness, as you were saying, man, God enlarges your appetite to where you begin to develop, when that foundation of the word's been laid, you begin to develop a panoramic uh, understanding sure. of the word of God to where you're no longer looking at the scripture for the verse that's in front of you. You're looking at all the other ones that you have already uh, got rhema on that connect with that to where now you become a man of a thousand sermons. Right. And, uh, and when you hear the word, what I'm doing is I'm writing down everything that people are saying, and then I'm connecting other things I know that just kind of footnote off of it because uh, the word is so powerful to where before I was praying for 15 minutes, now my prayer is, God, help me, Lord, to condense these hundred sermons into one. <laughs> and I know I'm talking to, to, to the choir here, but it's like because that understanding grows and, and, 
And God's desire, I know, is for us to, to come out of the flesh and into the spirit. You and me were reading this just uh, right before the, uh, we begin the episode. In Romans chapter 8, and I won't steal the verses 14 and 16 that you threw out you there. You can. It's, it's not my verses. It's, yeah, it's yours. It's, it's your, in the I'm Bible. Gonna, I'm going to give you credit for it because I know you're going to take it somewhere. In Romans chapter 8, we're going to begin in verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, you look a lot better when you're in Christ than when you're out of Christ. And when you're in Christ, there's no condemnation. You're not getting beat. God will not beat you up in, about everything you've done before. It says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. When we walk in the flesh, Satan's going to always be there to condemn you, to try to get you to quit and tell you that you cannot live this Christ-like life. But when you walk in the spirit, amen, you, there's a liberation that comes through an understanding of the word to where you understand what truly what grace is, what peace is. You understand what it is to, to live in this world, and you might not be perfect, but man, God's helping you reach for it and lay hold of things. It says in verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. God wants us to move into a place to where we're no longer infants in Christ. But how important is it for us to mature, for that foundation's been laid, you know, how important is for us to move beyond um, being children of God into being led by God? What's the difference? Well, yeah, you, you start by, con you know, you start by confirmation. Mm -hmm. But eventually, as you mature, you get to the point that your footsteps are ordered and measured of the Lord, and you know where you're going. You know what mm -hmm. you're supposed to do. Come on. And see, that's the thing that you got to push for. Otherwise, we stay in verse 16. Mm. Come on. Okay? We stay with that childlike understanding, and, you know, God just confirms it. He just goes, okay, well, that's good, you know? I'll never forget this. God said to me <laughs> one day, I'll never forget this. You know, you talk about preparing sermons. Yes. So I did the same thing you did. I was up there in the loft, you know, in Morro Bay, and, oh, God, you know, I just want to preach on what you want me to preach. God, help me, God, so that I'm led by the Holy Spirit, God. And God says to me, what do you want to preach on? And I go, oh, God, you don't understand. I want to <laughs> preach what you want me to preach, God. And he goes, son, what do you want to preach? It's all good. Mm -hmm. It's, it's all my God. word. Mm -hmm. It's all good. I'll bless it. I help you. Isn't that something? You we make things so complicated sometimes, you know. I mean, in, in, the, in the, the verse you're referencing is, is Romans 8, 16. It says, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. It's like when you're born again, you, you have that seal of redemption. You know you're saved. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and the, we were talking about this, how that word children there is the Greek word technon, which means infant, like, right. like newborn. Um, so when you're born again, you're a child of God. I mean, you're, you're born again, and just like a child, you know, when you're not developed, you know, uh, you know, it's like I have a, a, a new granddaughter, my very first one. Oh, she's so beautiful, Briar Rose, just so beautiful. She kind of is. Oh, she is. She takes after her, her, her mom and her, uh, her grandma. But, you know, it's like uh, she came a little bit early. And one thing you notice about infants is they're so vulnerable. They'll eat whatever you put in, in their face. And there's just simple things, things that you and I don't even think about doing you know, is it takes a lot for them. Like, like she's at the place now to where she's starting to, she's able to hold her head up some. But I remember when she first came out, man, that girl couldn't hold her head up for nothing. You had to make sure you had your hand on her right. head or, you know, you know, her head's going to be flying around. And sometimes Christians are like that. They get saved and it's like, and something that you and I just take for granted because our, we've exercised those faith muscles, our belief system's strong to where there's things that we do. We don't, it, it's just, it's what we do. And it, it, it comes so easy. It's like muscle memory. It's just, it's there uh, and because it's always exercised. But for someone that camps out at this place where they're just a child, an infant of God, 
you know, just doing the simplest things like going to church, uh, tithing, uh, serving, those simple major Bible, pray every day, read your Bible. It's like, it's like that child that can't keep their head up. It's like, and too many Christians stay there. But, you know, you had brought up verse 14, which says, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Well, the Bible we just read in verse 16 said that, you know, that the Spirit bears witness with us that we are the children of God. What's the difference between between being a child of God and being a son of God. Well, the word son here is the Greek word weos, which means a mature child. Right. It's like when you can be led by God, now you're in a place where you're mature enough for God to be able to trust you. And again, ask you like what he told you, what do you want to preach? Yeah. How important is it for people to grow to that place to where they know how to be led but not led like the only, some people, the only led they know is when they tell you God led them to leave you. Uh, what's the... What, what? God, God led me. God's saying, I got to leave the church again for the 20th time. But he hasn't told me where I'm going. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's a little pastor okay. stuff coming well, well, out. No, but talk about this for a second. Think about this. Okay. Paul writes to hmm. the church of Corinth. In the 13th chapter, he says, listen to this, okay. He says, when I was a child, I mm. spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. That's good. But when I became mature, mm. I put away childish things. Now, Ephesians mm -hmm. 4, Ephesians 4 says, uh, here we go. Let's see where it is. Okay, verse 14. So I got to read 12 and 13. Yes. So for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, mm. that we henceforth be no more children tossed mm. to and fro, fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness, whereby they lay and wait to deceive. Now, mm. Paul says this. He says this. I want to be able to give you meat. Oh, come on. But you're still fighting over your identification with ministry. Because mm -hmm. you just say, I'm of Apollos. I'm of Paul, Cephas. Mm -hmm. I'm of Peter. I'm, of, I'm super spiritual because I'm of Christ. Mm. You know, nobody tells me what to do because I am, I'm just going to follow Christ. Super spirituality is boring mm -hmm. yeah, because you... really the love is the sign of mere maturity. Yes, yes. So do we know how to love? I mean, I mean really, we, it's easier to say. In words. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, I can but say it all day long. <laughs> Sometimes doing I it is different love than you, saying bro it. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, gosh, this is such a huge thing. You know, when, when it comes to this, it, it, in verse 12, it says, His intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints. And that's the thing is that when, when revelation comes, man, you're, you're becoming fully equipped. And, and when you have love being perfected in you, man, I, I wish we can go further with this. We can only go a little bit further, but when love is being perfected in you, that's when people see Christ in you, the hope of glory. It, it's, it's when love has had its perfect work inside of you, but so often, you know, you see folks that, you know, and as a pastor, you can relate to this. You've been doing this a lot longer than me. You know, there are people that, man, there's stuff that God has invested in you as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel, that you just, you want to give it to people. And I mean, and there's times as a pastor where I'm like, there's stuff that I would love to impart to the people I have, but I can't do it to the majority of stuff that I reserve for special settings because I know children will choke on meat. Sure. Sure. And so you stick to things that are, th that, you know, are, like you said, a little bit easier to swallow. But, man, I, I became the kind of Christian to where I wanted everything. The Bible says to the fat soul loathes the honeycomb, but to the hungry person, man, even the bitter things are sweet. 
And we're at that place where we understand that the, when God's leading you, he's going to lead you into the whole truth. And I think that for a lot of believers, you know, you, you have to make, again, just quoting you, making a decision that you want to step into a place where God can lead you. Because you get a lot more done when you're led, don't you? Oh, yeah. When you think about this, we're not led because somebody else is judging us. We're led because of our relationship with the Lord. It, who, who says that they have to come into agreement with us mm -hmm. when we say we're hearing the voice of God? Matter of fact, I don't even say that mm -hmm. because the truth of the matter is, is I'm going to get judged if I say that. Mm -hmm. So it's not nobody's business. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. Yeah, but uh, I'm telling you, there's so <laughs> much more here. You know, we'll definitely get back in the studio again sometime. Well, I'm telling you, you want to be a word believer, amen? If you want to grow and you want to be a mature believer, I'm telling you, grow in your understanding of this word. Let the Spirit of God cause this word to come alive. Let this word be uh, feasted upon every day of your life. And you're going to see that you're going to grow and step into a place where God can start using you in ways that you never thought he can use you, amen? But you have to mature, Amen. In these things. And you'll only mature if you develop an appetite to spend time with God in his word. Amen. We love you. Uh, Dr. Rogers, thank you for being here again with me. Amen. I thank you for being with me today. And we'll see you guys again here on another episode of Kingdom Concepts.